Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be talking about LangChain and its experimental feature called masking. A real world example of this would be maybe your customer support system and you're actually getting information from users and you need to just scrub that data so that when you're putting it into your LLM, it's actually masked from the actual information that it needs. So we're going to look at not only the masking feature as well as some of the streaming capabilities and then actually look at it in LangSmith just to see what the output is. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna look at the LangChain docs. Um, what's interesting about this is, so if you go into the experimental uh, section underneath more and go to masking, this is where we're gonna find it. However, this is only available for LangChain JS. And the way that I came about this is I was actually reading their blog post where they were talking about how uh, different systems are actually using masking for the PII or personal, personal identifiable information, removing that from the, uh, the LLM. So a real world scenario is that this could be in a customer port support system and it's receiving messages that are sensitive uh, based on the, the customer's information and you want to mask that information. We're going to look at multiple different examples, uh, specifically in Next.js, but we're going to go through the three that they have here. We have a basic example, we're going to look at the kitchen sink, and then we're actually going to look at the Next.js stream. So I built this in a couple different ways where we also have some utilities and then we'll actually do a uh, GUI where it looks like it's it's just kind of a chat. So the first thing that we're what you're going to need to pay attention to is make sure that you're getting the LangChain OpenAI install um, because it has some of the experimental uh, pieces in there, uh, and this is specific to OpenAI. So let's go ahead and get our project up. So if I open this code, and remember, if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll uh, you'll have access to this code base as well as the, the Vercel example. But if you if you want to start this from scratch, you want to make sure that you have your environment variables. So you have the LangChain uh, tracing. This is all for um, LangSmith specifically. And then you are going to need an OpenAI key. So what I did for this is I specifically built a um, an API just called masking. And I just put in different routes for the basic route, kitchen route, and the stream route. Um, and then we'll also go through down here, you can see the uh, masking parser, which I just put in, in a utils file. This is using app router. Um, so just uh, for this example, um, just know that. So if we dive right into the basic example, um, what we can see is the fact that it's actually creating uh, some text. And this is what we want our mask to look like. So specifically, it's giving a, a, essentially a random hash and then an identifier that we know, OK, this mask is particular to this uh, type of data. We are, again, you're going to be pulling in the LangChain experimental make, uh, masking. And then we're actually using regex for defining what these masks are. So we're building a regex masking transformer. And it's taking the hash function if we want, as well as like the pattern itself. So these are our different patterns. You can customize them however you want. These are just based on the example from the docs themselves. And then you're taking this information and you're putting it into your masking parser and you're adding the transformer. Last part is you're going to actually mask this information. So you can take whatever input you have. You can see here it's got things like email as well as a phone number and more email and we'll actually mask the information based on the parser and then what i did just for this example is to show you that you can also rehydrate this is really important so that if you want to uh, then show that it's not it's not a one-way mask you can actually um, disable it as well and the interesting thing is you could technically use this on the front end because it is JavaScript. Um, I'm just doing everything in the back end just to show how it works. And then we're going to output this JSON uh, right here. So if we bounce back to our browser and we go ahead and we look at our first example here, we're just going to go ahead and refresh. You can see that the mask is, let me blow this up for you. We can see that the mask is, uh, 
is actually the mask is actually going over the email as well as the phone number and you can even see it over here it's catching the phone number as well and then we when we rehydrate we're actually looking at the uh, the information that's coming back from it if we look at our uh, text we can actually see a console logged here as well again I'll blow this up a little bit um, where you can see the the information coming back from in the back end of it being masked as well as it being uh, hydrated we're not actually doing anything with the chaining right now what we're doing is actually just transforming the data uh, that we have before we actually put it into more information all right so next we're actually going to jump to the kitchen sink example so if we go back to our documentation, you can look at the kitchen sink here and where you can see that we're using a lot of the same uh, features, but there's a little bit of this being extended with different patterns for the regex, as well as you can see some eventing. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take all this and we'll put it in a utils file. So if we go back to our code, if you notice, I have the, the route already made. Right here, it just has the import for the utility that we're actually going to build. It has the message with all the PII information. And then we're actually going to just hydrate and, uh, I'm sorry, we're just going to mask and then rehydrate and return a response. So far, everything that we're doing, again, isn't going through the stream. So we could actually do this on the front end. I'm just choosing it to do it on the back end um, as good security practice. So if we look at our utility, you can see it's in our utils folder, our masking parser, and then we have our import. Again, we're pulling in the experimental masking. What we're doing here is we're creating a simple hash. What this will do is it'll actually allow, just as like before, basically an, uh, a variable number uh, system as a randomized hash. We're also gonna be assigning like a readable variable so beforehand so we'll know which mask is actually doing the regex and then as we go down to these patterns all of these are, are are really just regex patterns when i ran this the first time i noticed that this uh question mark i actually isn't permitted in the uh, regex for javascript and it was throwing an error so what i did is i actually commented this out and removed that um probably not the best, uh, and I'm also not the best at regex. So if you have a better way of doing this, would love to see it in the comments. Um, but I, I asked ChatGPT and this is what it told me. So that is one thing to be aware of that if you're copying and pasting from the, um, the guides to just kind of watch out for this, this piece. Uh, with all of these regexes, we are then gonna put them into our masking transformer. Right here, we'll have our patterns. And then we have our different hooks for each stage of the masking and hydrating. So basically, these are different events that are going to be fired. And we'll have, uh, we can have different functions. We're just going to be console logging, just like the documentation would say. But uh, we can actually see this information. Lastly, we're actually going to initialize the masking uh, parser. And then we're just exporting it so we can use it back here in our kitchen sink. So let's go ahead and just do a quick test. If we go back to our uh, URL here, we can actually see that this is the masking uh, kitchen example. We'll go ahead and do a refresh and we'll find some interesting things going on here. So not only is it doing the hashing as expecting and hydrating, we're seeing some, some different kinds of errors. So right here, we're noticing that name is actually uh, doing the first part of name, but it's not actually doing it for dough, which is kind of interesting. It did recognize the email, but then it actually saw the hash that the email was creating and thought it was a bank account. So it's hashing the, uh, the, the random hash here, which is pretty interesting. So this is where maybe like the regex that we took out is a, is, it needs to be a little more specific. The other thing we'll notice is that the driver's license uh, and passport are incorrect as well as when we have our name here which uh, is just called bank account it actually recognized that as a name 
So you need to be careful with your regex uh, just to make sure that it is actually masking the appropriate information um, as well. The other thing that I found interesting is that when it rehydrated and it had we had this email and the bank account, which was actually hashed again, it it doesn't actually go back through and do the hash uh, for email. What it's doing is it's taking the bank account that it it tried to mask and actually putting that number back in, but not the entire number. So it's not running it twice, which makes sense. But just interesting uh, kind of things to look out for when you're when you're doing your regex to make sure that you're you're getting the information that you actually want to mask, and then being able to rehydrate it. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. Also, all the code for this will be in the link below. You just sign up for our newsletter. You'll get the code as well as the link to Vercel. And with that, let's get back to coding. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to actually go back and look at our stream example. And this is actually taking uh, chat history and doing a payload. So this is where we're actually going to see information going into our sequence. And what I did for this is I actually made an entire chat sequence right here that we can actually use. So we have a UI that has different uh, PII information going back and forth between two parties. And we're actually going to take this information and pass the entire history and then try and get a summary of that so that we can see what the uh, customer support might see or how we can mask all this information and still pass it through the LLM. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code for this. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to take a look at the front end. And so this is the code that I put together. Again, this is available if you um, just click the link below and sign up for the newsletter. But it has the chat history. We have a role, and we have our content. And it's basically just an array of a JSON object. We have the ability to add a new message to our array, as well as uh, send, a message, send a single message to continue that chain. And then we're also doing a um, we're taking the entire chat history and we're posting it to our stream. So what we're going to be doing with that is when we receive the information, we'll actually uh, be getting the entire chat history and being have it being sent over. So again, this is uh, you can see this is the the key press and things that and the send button to to send the entire uh, chat history right here. So once we click this button. What we'll do is we'll send it to the stream, the entire uh, chat history. And as you can see here, we're still going to be using our utility that we built. And you can see some of the other things that we're importing is actually chat, OpenAI, as well as our prompt template, and then our bytes, bytes out parser, output parser, parser. We're also in Next.js, so we're going to be using the runtime of Edge. The first thing we want to do is format the message. So we're going to be taking our role so we know who's speaking. And we're going to be taking the content that was being said between, for that, uh, that role. We're going to take all this. We're going to create a uh, customer support prompt, uh, prompt template. And so what this is saying is that you are a customer support summarizer agent. Always include PII, masked PII in your response. Here's the current conversation. This is what we'll pass into our template. And then with the input from the user, which will be the latest part of the, the message. So as you come down to the actual post part of the, the stream, you can see we're getting our body information. We're checking to see if there's messages, otherwise give a blank array. We're taking the previous messages, which is going to say one from the last one. So it's assuming that as you click the button, it's going to grab everything but the last message, and then the current message, which is going to be the newest input. Again, so what this is doing is it's taking the, the single message, and it's actually putting it through our masking parser to actually take that information and, and ma successfully mask it. So what we're going to do here is we are going to actually, then we're going to see the guarded history. 
So we're taking all the messages, joining them as an array, and doing the same thing. We're going to mask that entire history. Next, we're building out our prompt template. And this is where it's actually going to go through the LLM because we have our model here. And we have our output parser, and then we're chaining our events from our prompt, our model, and our output. Right here, you can just see that we're console logging the message itself, the entire history, and then we're actually mapping the state of each one of the hashes to the PII information. So we'll see that in our response. Next, we're going to stream this data. Sorry, we're going to stream this data and uh, put it into our chain, right? Of these are the variables that we're looking for inside of our prompt template that we're going to replace with. Then we just have our, our stream response. So let's go ahead and go over to our browser and actually see this in action. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just scroll to the bottom. We can see we have all our PII information. There's a mix of information. And we're just going to click the send to chat history. And you can see right here it's starting to stream. And so now we're actually getting our information back. You can even see in the response that it's grabbing the particular information. Again, we're having that uh, interesting um, bank account going over the email. And we're looking at uh, different information. It's giving us a summary. It's telling us all the, the caches that we have inside the history of information. So now what we'll do is we'll just kind of see what was happening on the back end so we can kind of look at the state as well as what's going on here. So the first thing we can notice is we have our input hash and we have our guarded history, which is hashed. So you can see this is the hashed information as well as this is the entire object of the history itself. And then we have our map, which is the current state of everything. So it's holding on to all this information. You can see it even recognized social security. It thinks that's a name. Main Street is a name instead of an address. Uh, Jane Doe it got this time. And then you can kind of see like some of the mistakes it was it was making uh, as far as like the hash. I think this is probably. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at this as to see what happened in Langsmith. So if we go back to our browser and we look at Langsmith, we'll see that we have a new runnable sequence, which is right here. We can go ahead and look at this runnable sequence, and we see that even the input itself has the masked uh, information as it's going into our runnable sequence. The next piece is it goes into the into OpenAI, and you can see as it's going into our LLM, again, it's sending in the masked information so that the LLM itself is not getting this information stored in a third party, which is in incredibly important. And then the output, again, is returning. It's able to recognize that this, these states are actually the, informa the masked information, which is why that we can rehydrate if we look at the, the state that's being maintained in uh, our map right here. And this is how we can rehydrate is through this uh, information. And so with that, that's where uh, the experimental branches of, or the experimental part of masking is. And uh, if you're interested, there is a way to, I put all of this up on Vercel. You can take a look and uh, play with it yourself. All right, that's it for us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And remember that all the code you can get if you sign up through the newsletter, it'll give you access to the code base as well as the Vercel link to test this out on your own. I hope you enjoyed today's session where we covered masking specifically in Langchain JS, and then looked at how that information is actually passing through the runnable sequences in Langsmith. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, have a great one. Happy nerding.